Um, so this is the long post. This is by Lauren Southern, not to be confused with Laura Southern, who is a figment of my imagination. Lauren Southern has been absent from the public stage for quite some time. People have been speculating that something might have happened with her husband, um, but nobody really knew for sure what happened to Lauren Southern. So, um, she has written about what has happened, and I will read it for you. There is a video in Odyssey by her that is over an hour long. Uh, I found it literally before, with less than an hour before stream, so I had not been able to watch it. So, um, but you can watch it yourself on Odyssey if you would choose to. Uh, I will read this post, though, because I do have that available to me. She says... Okay, it's taken me years to address this, but I'm finally in a good enough space mentally and spiritually to do so. What you're reading now is a summary of an approximately hour-long video that I will link below. My life has been utterly batshit insane for the last four to five years. While my online content might seem boring compared to my heyday in 2015 to 2018, my real life has been a fever dream. I've been afraid to talk about it for various reasons, not least of all people wondering if I'm a full-blown schizo. You can all tell I've changed. You're right. What you may not know is why. And I think the final phase of healing is creating some congruence between my public and private life by telling you. You all know that I have been the object of extreme scrutiny by multiple governments. I should have known my sanity, sanity was suffering with the interrogations, nationwide bans, and confinement almost became background noise for me. However, what I didn't realize was what it would get weirder outside of politics than in. I might as well just jump in and say this. Despite being treated like an international fugitive, I married someone who worked in a capacity for the feds. Yes, I know. Mima way. The truth is we didn't meet when he was on duty. In fact, he was on a hiatus when we started dating. And the kind of work I do is outside his purview. We generally did deeply care for one another. And if anything, our lives were made a living nightmare due to the unorthodox pairing of an activist with someone who required a security clearance to get work. We really felt we could pull off a Romeo and Juliet thing, and he had sworn he was willing to give it all up for me as I was for him. So you can believe me when I say I didn't marry him for his job or for money. I was a threat to his ability to keep both. And I'm not so shallow that I'd marry a man for looks. I married him because I was in love and we shared the same values, Catholic and conservative with aspirations towards marriage and family. But unfortunately, after we did settle into a more mundane routine, the reality of losing his life's work became too much for him. Although he was able to return back to something resembling his old work, eventually his security clearance was downgraded due to being married to me. His access to certain jobs and promotions was limited, if not revoked. Going from a living James Bond lifestyle to being reduced to a boring middle manager with little to no upward mobility is crippling for ambitious men. I'm not saying it's okay, but it's human. He took his resentment for, for this out on me, which I understand. He needs to stop being a handmaiden for this guy. Um, I feel because he accepted the risk involved, he would never leave our marriage, citing career reasons, but he did eventually find a variety of lesser reasons to propose divorce. His final one being my ADHD. When I say there was no deeper co um, complaint, I mean it. It was always very vague, with all who heard it equally perplexed by what steps could even be taken. I suppose if you don't wish to stay married, picking something someone cannot change about themselves is a surefire way to do it. Although I certainly did try, as I can sympathize with the frustration of dealing with an ADHD partner in my, any scenario, I spent nearly all day cleaning, cooking, caring for a child, laundry, ironing, whatever I could do to help. I even split bills until my bank account was empty. While no one is perfect, I don't think I ever worked so hard at anything in my life as being a good wife. I also began working, began going to a specialized ADHD clinic and taking Vivazine, Vivazine daily to see if that would satisfy his growing demands that I manage it at threat of divorce. Sadly, it did not work, and whether it be genuinely due to my ADHD or his resentment towards me being a career deadweight, my husband left me and our child. I was devastated. My life as I knew it fell apart in a moment. I would ask anyone reading this not to express hate or judgment in the comics. That doesn't help anyone. Just prayer for all involved. 
Whether the right decision or not, COVID work stress, losing the things you've sacrificed your entire life for are not easy for anyone. It's been two years since this happened. If I'm going to be honest, I nearly lost my mind. I think almost anyone would. I was heart beyond heartbroken, even more so when all the offers for co-parenting mediation were rejected as involvement with us would complicate his future. To this day, I received no alimony, child support, or anything like that. I could have pushed harder for it initially, but while we while still hoping he would return, I certainly didn't have it in me to fight over money. For the first seven months after he left, I lived with my parents, during which my mental health was as shot as my savings. I was in severe denial, so I kept wearing my ring and speaking about my husband as if he was still a part of my life. My brain was honestly broken, but I didn't have the luxury of licking my wounds. My son was depending on me, if not for my friends, including a very few in the political world who knew the story. I don't know what I could have done. I particularly want to thank uh, Evelyn Ray, who was with me through every step of this all, whether I was in Australia or Canada. Eventually, I moved out of my parents' house. I ended up in a cabin in a trailer park. It was unconventional, but surprisingly, the first step of what would become a beautiful healing journey. Because despite living in a cabin infested with ants, with taps that only gave non-drinkable dirt water, and my cabin being the community trailer park washer and dryer, since no one else had one, I found family among the others living there. They gave my son and me what we desperately needed, community, role models, unconditional kindness, and love. Believe me when I say that those days of reckoning, of rednecking it up in the woods were some of the happiest of my life. Every stereotypical idea of trailer park residents was shattered for me. These were some of the kindest, most dignified individuals I've ever met. Any privileged influencers who call the working class lazy only wish they could be so decent. I met children living in cars with more manners than any prep kid I've ever met. I don't live there anymore. Eventually, the draw of running water and not waking up the people using your basement as an impromptu cooked out spot was too much to resist. But to be honest, I often miss it. However, I have cultivated a new mix with the old and equally beautiful community of people around me for my son to grow up with. Some of them I grew up with. Some are local churchgoers. Some are even further fans who became friends. And yes, some miraculously are people from media and politics with actual souls. Uh, thank you all truly. Um, I will finish this, I suppose. What have I learned from all this? Well, on one hand, I'm extremely blackpilled about politics, especially seeing how powerful and corrupt governments can be from the inside and knowing that the media, which is supposed to hold them accountable, has been largely reduced to listicles and performative gaslighting. And that has very much, or that very much has included me in the past. I've commented on far too many things I did not I had not lived and got a serious reckoning from reality. I've grown to realize that I'm no one's ideological avenging angel. I'm just me. I don't fit into any neat little political box because life doesn't. I have too much love and good amount of agreement with many of my followers still. I just don't expect anyone set up tar talking points of philosophical outlook to inform my work. Uh, my skeptical skepticism of power isn't going anywhere. My very real experiences with hostile governments were simply too dramatic to trust the state again. This is not because they've been taken over by liberals. It's because they have only been used by f as fronts for sociopaths who will use whatever moral code de jour is as a way of going on and exploding and deceiving those they were supposed to protect and serve. I'm only one person, though, and I don't wish to give every moment of my life in mind to that darkness. Instead, I do what I can where I can make change. Um, but given what I've experienced in the behemoth I know where I've I decided the most important things in my life are actually directly around me. People I love, nature, actually enjoying the world instead of having so much hubris to think I can change anyone else's decision making or actions except for my own. Um, and the rest is just personal notes. So, the lesson chat, in case you're not following along, is that I was right. And I know you might be thinking... Josh, Josh, how could you say that? What could you possibly be right about? When I told you that anybody working for the government would put their loyalty to the government and their 20-year pension above anybody, their own family, their own children, their wife, their mother and father, I was right. And some people think, but Josh, my dad works for the Fish and Wildlife. My aunt works for the USDA. My, uh, my grandfather worked for the FBI, and so on and so forth. They would skin you alive 
in a moment's notice. Given the order, unthinkingly, they would pull out their service revolver and blow your fucking brains out the very second that a commanding officer said, either do this or you will be held in contempt and your pension will be taken away. So, um, I feel bad for Laura. Uh, I hope that she recovers from her problems. I hope that I don't know. She has, she, her husband was like Asian or some shit. It's going to be hard finding like a stepdad and moving on from this with the, with the child. Um, but if she had listened to me and knew to keep feds out of her life, always like, for instance, chat, you wouldn't date somebody who had been with a black guy. Why would you date a fed? It's basically the same thing. There's almost, in terms of the psychological aspects of what it takes to have sex with black people and uh, be with the federal government, there is basically, basically identical. The kind of person who could work for the government is the same kind of person who would have sex with black people. This is the truth, and you know I'm right. Um, so don't be hypocritical and be like, oh, it's the love of my life. So he works for the government and has a top secret security clearance. Fed should be forced to keep their fed federally as a, a deep, dark secret. They should never feel comfortable telling that their, their spouse that they work for the federal government. They should be like, oh, um, the, the J Edgar Hoover building. Yeah. I'm going up there. Uh, to do juggling. I'm a clown. I like to perform on the street outside the J. Edgar Hoover building. Um, that's why I spend all my time there. I, I, I collect tips on the street by juggling bowling balls or bowling pins. Um, I don't work for the feds. It should be like a, like a, a deep secret. You know what I mean? Um, and she really needs to stop apologizing for her husband. It's like, oh, he told me lies and ruined my life and abandoned me to live in a trailer park and doesn't even pay me and has completely, totally forsaken my child. Um, and I'm going to have to raise his spawn because the alternative is, is drowning him. Um, and I get no thanks for it whatsoever. But you know how, amb how proud, ambitious men are with their careers. That she doesn't give a f his career is over. You think that just because he divorced you, he he's gonna get promoted again? No, he's blacklisted as like a enemy of the state. Uh, he doesn't give a f <laughs> doesn't give a fuck about you. <laughs> what are you talking about? Um, so I don't know. Hopefully, the next part of her healing is realizing that uh, she trusted a Fed and she shouldn't have, and now her life is ruined and her prospects are are fucking tanked. Because remember, her career was basically built on the fact that she was like a trad wife, uh, that she she was a, a a conservative beacon, and now she doesn't have that because um, she's not. <laughs> she's no longer a trad wife. Best she can hope for at this point is like a blended family. It's very sad. Um, it's sad that we have members of the federal government who don't live in shame. And it's sad that we have people who continue to trust and tolerate members of the federal government as if they're real people and not enemies of the average person. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CAC of Remember to like and subscribe.